Good morning, everyone. Before we begin, let me just review Psalm 22. I sing, my God, and then you respond. It goes like this. My God, you sing, my God, why have you abandoned me? Try it again. My God, you sing, my God, why have you abandoned me? One more time, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Let's prepare our hearts by singing Hosanna together before we begin. <laughs> Morning. Good morning. Welcome to our parish community of St. Mark the Evangelist as we celebrate Holy Mass on this Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. In respect for today's liturgy, please silence your cell phones. Our celebrant of today's Mass is Monsignor Jim, assisted by Deacon Roger. This Mass is being offered for the soul of Dave Rogers. Please take home a copy of the bulletin to keep updated with the special events here at St. Mark, especially during this Lenten and Easter season. The schedule for Holy Week is as follows. Tuesday, April 12th, there will be adoration after the 8 a.m. Mass and confessions from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Holy Thursday, April 14th, no 8 a.m. Mass, morning prayer at 9 a.m., Mass of the Lord's Supper at 5 p.m., followed by adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in the chapel until 9. Good Friday, April 15th, no 8 a.m. Mass, morning prayer at 9, Stations of the Cross at 12 noon, followed by Divine Mercy Novena, and the Passion of Our Lord at 3 p.m. Holy Saturday, April 16th, no 8 a.m. Mass, morning prayer at 9. Blessing of the food will be at noon. 
Easter Vigil at 7.30 p.m. Please note there will be no 4 p.m. Vigil Mass on Holy Saturday. No confessions Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Easter Sunday, April 17th, Masses at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 12 noon. The church office will be closed on Holy Thursday, April 14th, until Monday, April 18th, and will be open on Tuesday, April 19th. The readings for today's liturgy can be found in our Missal Journey Songs at number 898, Year C. And now let us all rise. And if you would, please turn and face the middle aisle. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And now we bless the palm branches. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone, anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. To so those who have been sent off, went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying this colt? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading, spreading their cloaks on the road. And now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, a whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds that they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven 
and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. And now let us worship the Lord. Crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. All kingdoms of the earth resound in praise of him alone. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. King for all eternity. Crown him the Lord of heaven, where angels sing above. Well, whom the King to whom is given the wondrous name. Crown him with many crowns, as thrown before him fall. Throughout the earth his praise resound, for he is Lord of all. Throughout the earth his praise resound, for he is Lord of all. The Mass continues with the opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be seated and be attentive to the words of sacred scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given a, me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, everyone, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groaned for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and they shake their heads saying, is this the one who relied on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. 
My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs closing in on me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They divide my garments among themselves and they throw dice for my clothing. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But the whole world will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. O oh Lord, do not stay far away. You are my strength. Come quickly to my aid. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found in human appearance. He humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please remain seated throughout the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel, the passion of our Lord. Our part will be highlighted in red on the overhead screen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, the words of the gospel Christ, in your heart and on your King mind that you of endless glory. Everyone. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to death. And death on the cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you that from this time on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me 
is with me on the table, for the Son of Man indeed gives as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest and the leader of, as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny it three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? Everyone, no, nothing. They replied, he said but, to them, But now one of you has a money bag, should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, Namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went as was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was ha about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. 
A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man too was with him, for he also was a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When, day, when the day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, we found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, the king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priest and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teeth all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and he had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by, accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Pilate asked him, Away with this man. Release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! 
Pilate addressed them a third time. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder for whom they had asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with them as they wish. As they led him back away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him, and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Please kneel if you're able to. Please sit. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this special, for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breast. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. 
After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind. And when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. I didn't have to wait for you to sit down after the gospel because you were seated for the whole thing. Now, I have a 20-minute homily prepared. And if you believe that, I'll tell you another one. And uh, when I was stationed at St. Teresa's Parish some years ago, uh, it was Palm Sunday, Father David. It was kind of a... a, a it wasn't a Filipino parish, but Father David was Filipino, and he had a lot of customs that they do with the Philippines that we're not used to here in the United States. And so when I showed up for the 11 o'clock mass, I was going to have the procession, you know, with the children. And all the children were dressed like the people in our Lord's time. They had robes on, and their heads were covered with kind of veils and things, and they all had palms in their hands. And I were going to start outside and process down the aisle of the church singing Hosanna to the Son of David. You know, the choir was ready and everything. And when I went outside to get behind the children, there was a live donkey there. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not going to ride that donkey into church. And they said, no, no, Father, you don't have to do that. That's just for effect. We're going to have the children process down, and we're going to bring the donkey in and have him just follow down the main aisle and right out the side door so that it's just for effect, you know, that Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and which would be very meaningful. You'd look and you'd say, wow, this is really something. And so, you know, but what happened was as soon as the choir started singing, that donkey would not move. He was stubborn. They yanked and they pulled on his, you know, and he just would not move. So the donkey did kind of, uh, it was uh, uh, kind of a beautiful thing that it, they tried to do, but it didn't work. And then on Holy Thursday, you know, we have the altar of repose, repository, because it's the beginning of Jesus' Holy Eucharist where he consecrated bread and wine and then uh, Holy Thursday is the day where they, we commemorate that and the washing of the feet of the apostles who have 12 people in the church. They process to the altar of repose where we honor our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament for a number of hours. But at uh, St. Teresa's at that time with Father David, we went to the hall. You know, that's where they uh, honored the Blessed Sacrament. And the Blessed Sacrament was put in, they built a hut out of straw you know, a, a straw roof, and they had a window in it and a door that the priest could go in, and he put the Blessed Sacrament on a table in the window of that hut. And that's how we honored the Blessed Sacrament for several hours, because that was a Filipino custom. It was beautiful. So you see that every church, every uh, area has their own way of honoring uh, our Lord and during this beautiful Holy Week, you know, this is very special Holy Week. We begin that Holy Thursday, Good Friday, when our Lord suffered his passion and death. Holy Saturday, when our Lord is laying in the tomb. And then the blessing of food. And then, of course, resurrection on Easter Sunday, next Sunday. So, you know, this is a beautiful time of the year. And we hope and pray that you will be able to partake of the various ceremonies during this Holy Week. My friends, the passion that you heard today from St. Luke preaches itself. The drama of Holy Week has begun. 
The first reading from the prophet Isaiah begins, the Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. The question we ask ourselves, in what areas of your life are you weary? Is it at home? Is it where you work? Are you weary in your prayer life? What areas, what might we rightly describe as weary? Now we can ask ourselves, what part of the passion reading are the words that will rouse us from our weariness? Well, there are so many moments to pick from, so I invite us to sit down with the passion reading according to Luke. It's the longest one, you know. These next few days, it would be good for you to get out your Bible, look for the passion of Christ in St. Luke's, and read the passion again yourself. This, there's a moment that I find meaningful. It's only found in the Gospel uh, according to St. Luke. It's the dialogue which happened between Jesus and the two men who were condemned with him one on his right and one on his left. Uh, They were crucified with him. They are both not named. But tradition refers to the repentant criminal as Dismas and the unrepentant criminal as Justus. So the fact that they're not named, however, involves us to consider how we are like these men. In what areas of your life are you like justice? In what areas are your life are you like Dismas? Dismas qualifies as a saint because Jesus promises him that he will be with him in heaven. And so therefore his repre- he's represented as anyone who goes to heaven can be referred as a saint because his repentance is reflected in his prayer of abandonment. Jesus, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, I am, amen, I say to you this day, you will be with me in paradise. Of course, Dismas can resent all of humanity, for we all face the certainty of dying someday, Jesus can therefore be seen speaking to all who trust in him, his pledge of weariness. I think it's helpful to spend some time reflecting on the example of Justice Justice and St. Dismas. How are we like them? How can we avoid closing our hearts like Justice in favor of opening our hearts like St. Dismas? So when are the times in life that you feel like you're carrying a heavy cross? When are the times when you feel crucified, perhaps even justifiably? When are the times in life when you feel weary? So during this Holy Week, we are encouraged to feel God's mercy, not just to think about God's mercy. We're invited to experience God's mercy. We find ourselves crucified in life. We encounter a God who, for, from abandoning us, wants to be crucified right next to us, if that's where we find ourselves. And so, in fact, this week, we encounter a God who wants to be crucified for us. My friends, let's make this a week really holy by allowing the mercy of God to touch your heart. Make this a retreat experience for you and your loved ones. The sacred triduum begins on Holy Thursday at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and continues on Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and concludes with the Easter vigil next Saturday at 7.30. Let us look at this Holy Week by opening our hearts to God's mercy in every area of our lives so that we can share our love with our brothers and sisters. And may God bless you.
for coming to Holy Mass today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand together as we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting, amen. And now, my friends, we come to the prayers of the faithful, the universal prayers of the church offered to God our Father in heaven. For the church, may the suffering and death of Jesus Christ strengthen her in true holiness and give her new growth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders worldwide, that they may recognize the grave responsibility that comes with power, and may they protect the persecuted and work for an end to violence and war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those caught up in violence, remember especially the people of Ukraine, that they may know God's presence and peace in their time of fear and conflict, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may we imitate our Lord, accepting our share in his cross and serving others with humility and gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are to be received into the church at Easter Vigil, May, they, may these final days of their preparation be an occasion of transforming grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military serving at home and abroad, and our first responders, may they have the protection of Jesus with them as they protect us and our freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they know the splendor of everlasting mm. life in heaven, we also remember those for whom this Holy Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers and intentions that we place in our prayer book, and for all the prayers and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We also pray for the courage to forgive freely all who injured us, just as God has forgiven us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. O oh God, our Father in heaven, hear these petitions placed before you today and grant them if they be your will. We pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as our gifts are presented and prepared, let us sing together in Christ alone, number 637. Christ alone, who took 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for the sinners, uh, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis un celi et terra, gloria tua. Osana in excelsis, 
benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He took them your death, O oh Lord, and professed your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, Raphael, our pastor, and all the clergy, Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Mark, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, just as though the death of your Son we have brought us to hope for what we believe, by, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord. By your lives. Thanks be to God. We have uh, communion taken to the sick. May the ministers please come forward to receive their hosts. And we ask you to take with us the concern, love, and prayers of the people of St. Mark's Parish for those who are not able to attend Holy Mass. We stand, we stand before, before you, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as we, we gather, gather together in your name, with, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at long on our hearts. Teach the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are, we are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our action. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 